Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And last week, uh, Professor René Ferland sent me a video on how to allocate uh, just two space, uh, just two spool space to a new device. And I know that he, is, he did that because a few people in the community and I think on uh, the Discord chat channel, of which I never remember the address, but I'll find it out and put it in the description below this video. I had asked how to add more space because they were running out of spool space. And then he sent me this video and it was great. And I said, well, you went already this far allocating a new JS2 spool space. If you also allocate the uh, JS2 checkpoint space, uh, you're almost almost there in uh, creating a JS2 multi-access pool or mass pool. And um, what this is, is, uh, let me put it here, what is it here? It's when two or three systems uh, use the same spool space of JS2 and all these JS2 coordinate their each other's work through one JS2 spool and uh, JS2 checkpoint space. And so they don't really communicate each other through any protocol other than the data set itself. The right stuff there and the other guy picks it up. So I said, why don't you make a video out of that? Because it's going to be interesting for everybody. I've made over the years a bunch of uh, JS2 mass uh, clusters, uh, built them over the years. Uh, I've had some even on two sides of, uh, on two continents to just to accessing the same spool over two continents works beautifully over TCP IP because Hercules has the ability to share DASTY. So I said, why don't you make a video? And he made one and, uh, and here it is. Over to you, Rene. Hi everyone, this is Rene from Montreal. And today I'd like to make a video about the job entry subsystem spool. There's already a video about job entry subsystem on the channel. It's video M41. But this video will provide some further information regarding job entry subsystem. More precisely, I'd like to discuss how to increase the size of the job entry subsystem spool on TK4 minus. And I'd like to explore with you how to possibly set up a multi access spool for TK3, uh, TK4 minus. Okay, so let's start right away. Um, I have here uh, TK4 minus, which I have freshly downloaded from the website of Jürgen and started with the minimal system. The minimal system is, is a version, I say, of TK4 minus where you have just the minimal <laughs> subsystem. Let me show you. So if I select this, the AL like this, you can see that what's available here is CMD1, the pilot, job and three subsystem, VTAM and TSO. There is no MF1, there is no SNA solve, there is no GRP and stuff like that. So it's just the minimum thing to work with it with VTAM and 3270 connections. So that's usually the way I operate uh, TK4 minus personally because I don't use the other part of the system. So just for you to know. So I have this system running and I'd like to increase the size of the spool on it. So let, let's go first here to see uh, what are the data sets of job entry subsystem. This is already explained in uh, video M41. Uh, so if we look at this one like this, these are the data sets that uh, Job entry subsystem used for its, uh, its work. Job entry subsystem is a scheduler, you know, and it needs some space to store its own work data and also to store inputs from the jobs and outputs from the jobs, either for a short period of time before it gets printed or for a longer period of time because we, have, we hold the, the output over there. So everything is stored in this uh, data set called sys1.ha space. As it is, as you can see, it's a data set located on a DASD called ASP00 and it occupies the entire DASD. So it's a pretty big data set. But even though it's big, some people want to increase the size of the spool and add the space, uh, supplemental space to this uh, data set. But of course, I cannot increase the size of this one because it's already uh, uh, occupying the whole DASD, so there's no room anymore for, to increase the size of this particular data set. 
So if we want to increase the size, what we have to do is create a new DASD. Uh, let's call it, and we have to call it ASP01. It's the next one in the series uh, defined by this uh, naming convention. And on this new DASD ASP01, we're going to allocate a data set with that very uh, same name, sys1.ha space. And then we're going to update uh, the parameters of the system to make that DASD visible at IPL. And we're going to re-IPL the system with our, our warm start. And job entry subsystem will detect the new DASD, will detect the uh, data set on it, will format it automatically, and it will be available for us for use, okay? So uh, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna first create the DASD. Uh, do I have to do it? Okay, maybe like this. So where am I? I'm the, in the DASD folder of my system. You can see all the DASD like this. Uh, there is a DASD S00 with address 152. That's a 3330. DASD. So I'm going to add a DASD, a 3350, it's going to be a bigger DASD, so there will be more space for the spool, and I need an address for it, so uh, I'm going to use an address in 240, because these are 3350s, and many of the addresses are available, so let's check here, uh, 248. So as you can see, 240 is already taken by pub 000, 241 by pub 010. So I'm going to use 242 for my DASD. So let's create a DASD uh, compress with alternate cylinders. Let's call it ASP01.242. That's going to be a 3350 and the volume ID will be ASP01, good. Then the next step is to attach this DASD to the system. So in the Hercules console, I use the attach command, 242, 350, uh, ASP01. And now uh, the DASD is on the system. I need to initialize that DASD before I can allocate a new data set on it. So I'm gonna go in the special folder with the JCL, and I'm gonna submit the jobs from the uh, from that folder. So I already prepared the, the jobs. So the first one is the one to initialize the DASD. I call it job 01. As you can see, I use this um, utility called ICKDSF. That's a utility to initialize DASD. Uh, it's documented somewhere if you look. Uh, carefully and the statements, uh, the input uh, statement for the, the utility is pretty simple. You give the unit address, the volume ID, the, area, the owner, and I'm going to put a VTOC on it. Uh, 011 means it's going to be located on cylinder 0, track 1, and the size of the VTOC will be one track because there will be only one data set. The DASD, so I don't need a big uh, VTOC. So let's let's run this and see what happens. It should normally work. So I'm gonna submit my job. Okay, Hercules is asking me. Well, MVS is actually asking me if I want to alter the volume content. I'm gonna say yes. Zero zero U. That seemed to have gone well. Let's check here. Okay, so I have a maximum code of zero, so the initialization went uh, fine. Next step is to initialize, uh, not initialize, but allocate the, da the data set. So I have a job for that, it's job two. It's gonna use this uh, utility called IEFBR14, which does nothing, but help us to allocate data set. So as I said, the data set must have exactly the same name. So it's going to be sys1.ha uh, space. The disposition will be a new key. New because this is a new data set, of course, but I'm not going to catalog the data set. 
Otherwise, there will be a conflict with the one existing already on ASP00. So I'm just going to keep it. Anyway, a Java 3 subsystem doesn't need this data set to be catalogued. It's going to be located on a 3350 with that uh, volume ID and the space allocation will be done in absolute track so it means that I'm gonna allocate this amount of tracks 16,605 starting at tracks uh, 41 and this is gonna be a contiguous uh, allocation and a big uh, chunk uh, anyway if I have several extents a uh, job entry subsystem will use only the first one so I use almost the entire DASD. Why these numbers? Well, there is a reason for that, but I don't want to get into it for the moment. If you use a 3350, which is the biggest uh, DASD you can use, that's a proper amount uh, of tracks to allocate. So let's run this job. But before that, I have, of course, to make now the, the DASD uh, online and mount it because for the initialization of the DASD, the DASD must be offline, but to allocate data set on the, on the DASD, I need it to be online. So let's go back here. Uh, where is it? So I need to vary online the DASD 242. Good, and I need to mount it. For the moment, I will mount it as a private DASD. Later, I will update the parameter of the systems, of the system to make it visible at IPL. So, vol equal standard label asp01 use equal private. Good, and now I'm gonna run this job to allocate my data set. Submit to 02. Uh, is it going well? Yes. So now I should be able to see it actually. So if I go on ASP01, you can see the data set uh, sys1.ha space on ASP01. The curious symbol here means that the data set is not cataloged. It has the proper amount of, of uh, tracks. That's fine. So this is uh, good. And now what do I have to do? I have to update uh, sys1.parnlib to make the DASD visible at IPL. So let's go there. Uh, like this, sys1.parnlib. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> All right, we go at the end uh, button. There is this uh, member called VAT LST00. Let's edit this member. We can see all the DASDs now. Uh, there's one for ASP right here. So I'm gonna add another line. It's gonna be ASP01. Let's use the same specification, 3350. N. MVS 3.8 or disk 2. Good. Save. Fine. Okay, I don't need any more of this, so I'm gonna log off. Log off. And since I'm gonna shut down the system anyway, so maybe I disconnect for the moment. Let's come back here. Now I'm gonna shut down the system and re-IPL. But before I do that, let's check the size of the spool for the moment. So, DMO. So it used 5%. And if this uh, increase in size works, we should get a smaller number after we have re-IPL the system. So let's first shut down. I'm gonna shut down manually. Uh, shut now. I could use the shutdown script, but the, there will be all these pause along the way. So just to make it uh, faster, 
I'm going to do it manually. Even then, it's going to take some time. Good. Lines are green, so that's a good news. Okay, so when we have this famous message, all available functions complete, we're ready to shut down the system log. Then to purge maybe some job. And then stop job entry subsystem. At this point there should be anything. Okay, then we come I yes. And we stop. Quit. Of course, I need now to update the Hercules configuration of my my system for the new DASD because before I just added on the fly, but now I want to make it more permanent. So there are several ways to do that. I'm going to use the local configuration file. So I'm going to edit uh, a local configuration file. Let's say 01. And I'm going to attach on 242.33. Uh, located there. Four two. Okay, I think it's fine. And now I'm gonna start my system, but I'm not gonna use the command at MVS because I want to start the uh, minimal system. So unless I change a a system variable, you know, uh, if I do MVS, it's gonna start the standard system with all the all the stuff. So. Let's start it manually. To start manually, we use this uh, command uh, start uh, Hercules, like this. Okay, but uh, for that we need a console, so let me show you. We added conf uh, external consoles, like, oh, sorry. Conf uh, external consoles. There are different consoles you can choose. I chose that one, which allows me to operate uh, the system inside the Hercules console, so let's do that. All right, so start Hercules. This will just start the system, and then I do IPL 148. And then he asks for the system parameters, and I just answer slash recall, uh, reply 00 CMD equals 02. That's the minimal system. And it's going to be fine. And as you can see, ASP01 is being formatted. So we just detected our new DASD with the, the spool. And he formatted the data set uh, sys1.ha space, I assume. So now it's available. I'm going to wait for the end uh, of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I will need a connection anyway, so let's do that. I have to wait for TSO to start. There is okay, it's almost there. Good. And now maybe we can check the, the size of the spool. So D and O. And now you see it's no longer 5%, but 2%. So it means that the size of the spool has increased. Uh, so it worked. So we have now increase the size of the uh, job entry subsystem spool and we can do uh, operate the system like that and we have more room to to store jobs now so that was the first part of this uh, video now i would like to discuss another topic uh, we'll start from here uh, which is a multi-access pool so let me clear this for the moment maybe so what do I mean by that? Uh, let me show you. Oh, I just closed this. Uh, too bad. Uh, so let me come here. I'm the kind of guy who, who reads pretty much the manual. So here it is. So that's the the manual about the job entry subsystem and. The, uh, the way we initialize it and operate it and things like that. So I'm gonna go, I believe it's on page 163. 
yeah that's it so let's take a look here at multi-access pool so what it goes on now is that we have as you can see on this picture we have one uh, MVS system on the left one other MVS system on the right these two systems will share a DASD on which we have the check uh, the checkpoint data set we saw that checkpoint data set will be shared between the two systems and because of that uh, these two systems will be able to talk to I mean the two job entry subsystem will be able to talk to each other and uh, understand what's going on and I'll be able to share the spool the system will share the spool the spool will have multi access from different systems and it's going to be possible to see uh, the jobs on this system from that one and vice versa and it's going to be possible technically to submit a job from this system to execute on the other one and so on so because the spool is shared and the job entry system will, will schedule among the, the different systems so in order to put uh, to set up a multi-access pool we need at least two uh, two systems so i already have this one and i have guess what another one here right beside it so it's system we can see here on the uh, the folder so i have a first system which i named k uh, 158 and the second one is L168 you may ask yourself where does this come from well actually it comes from this manual you can see there is a system K158 and L168 so I just chose these names if we want to change the the system ID of this of an MVS there is a member in the sys1 parm lib to update and then we do a, a cold start going to change the, the name of the system so it's better if we have two different names because this way we're going to be able to distinguish the two systems I guess so I have therefore I have this system K158 and L168 and the first uh, step I guess to set up my multi-access pool now would be to have a common checkpoint data set located on uh, DASD a shared DASD. For the moment, uh, you know, the, the checkpoint data set is located on the DASD MVS uh, DLB. So let me show you. Um, see you later. Uh, 3, 4, so sys1 at uh, HP. So as you can see, the checkpoint data set is located on MVS DLB. There is an MVS DLB on the first system, and there is an MVS DLB on the second system, and each one of them has a, has a checkpoint data set. What I need to do now is create a common checkpoint data set and store it on a shared DASD. But there is already this new DASD F01 I created. So let's store on this DASD the checkpoint data set that's going to be shared between the two systems. And uh, let's update the system for that to say that the, the checkpoint data set is no longer on MVS DLB but on this uh, shared DASD. And then we're going to set up the two systems so that. Uh, they're going to share the DASD and uh, possibly uh, <coughs> IPL them so that everything goes fine. So first step is to create, if you wish, a checkpoint data set on S01, the, that new DASD we just created, and uh, copy this one or move this one from MVSDLB into uh, ASP01. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allocate a checkpoint data set on S01 now and I'm gonna copy this one here on S01 then I'm gonna update some members on the first system the system K158 and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other system then I'm gonna shut down these two and I'm gonna re-IPL each one one of them I will IPL with a cold start and the other one with a warm start and you're gonna see uh, what happened. It's okay, so the first step is to 
allocate this data set on uh, the new DASD S01 we just added and copy. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do that. Uh, again, I have two jumps for that. So uh, am I at the right place? I'm not sure. Uh, oh yeah. So uh, I have this job. No, not this way. Page uh, job 03. So this is the first job that's going to allocate this uh, SIS1 ASP checkpoint on S01. And again, I'm not going to catalog this thing because it's going to conflict with the, the one existing uh, already catalog. And I don't think uh, you need to catalog the checkpoint either to, uh, to operate job entry subsystem. So that shouldn't be a problem. And I'm going to use an abstract, uh, tra an absolute track allocation. And if you remember, there were 41 tracks available at the beginning because we started the, the spool at track 41. So the, the checkpoint is one cylinder long. So I'm going to allocate one 30 track starting at two and there should be enough uh, uh, room on the DASD to store the, the data set. So let's uh, execute this job. So let's submit this job. So that's job uh, 03. Uh, I have the wrong, the wrong console here. So apparently that went fine. So let's see if we have the return code. Yeah, the return code. So let's check. Uh, not uh, maybe yeah, this thing, but on S01. So we have the HA space from before, and now we have this new aspect checkpoint on catalog. 30 tracks, that's fine. And then I'm going to copy the one existing into this one. I have this job here. I'm not sure I need to do that, but anyway, I'm going to do it. And Moshix will uh, correct me if I don't need to do it. So I use this uh, utility I IEH move. I thought I could move the, the data set, but at the beginning I said uh, I'm just going to copy it anyway. So this is the way we should specify this uh, this job. So for this particular utility, you have the sysprint, you have a sysut1, which is a work uh, DASD, then you have to specify the system residence, the source, the target, and so on. This is described in the utility manual. So let's run this job to see if we can copy this, the, this data set. So submit uh, job 04. And over here, cut zero, so we copied it. So that's fine. Now, what do I have to do? Uh, a few things. Uh, I'm gonna go into sys1.jobentrysubsystem parm. So I have to change things in there. Uh, edit. So maybe it's a good idea to copy this guy because we're going to change this if we want to be able to re-IPL the system in case of error and stuff like that. Maybe that's a good idea to copy. So let me first uh, make a copy. So I'm going to start this uh, maybe back like this. Then I'm going to copy to farm. I'm going to save this. Come back here. Now I'm going to edit this. And I have to do the following. So let's check. You see there is here a parameter, checkpoint. That's the parameter that tells job entry subsystem where to find the checkpoint data set. For the moment, it's set up to MVS DLB. So I'm going to change it for uh, ASP01. So go look on this DASD to, ch to find the, the checkpoint data set. And I have also to specify the name of the systems that are going to share that uh, system, that uh, checkpoint data set. So let me go to the letter S over here. Uh, okay, so right here, I'm going to specify the system. So I2, I guess. So, so system one has a system ID 
K158 and system 2 as a system ID uh, L168. Okay, so that should be okay. I'm gonna save this. And after that, uh, this is update and the uh, lim has been update too. So normally I should at this point shut down the system. Okay, so let me log off here. And maybe disconnect for the moment. And then I come here and I'm gonna shut down the system for the moment. Uh, pilot. Because I need to do a cold, a cold start of the system, this one. So first I need to shut down. If you need to do a cold start, I suggest you shut down completely. Don't try to do it you know, by shutting down partly and then do a cold restart of job entry subsystems. Play it clean with job entry subsystems. And uh, normally it's gonna be a a nice guy to you if you do that. So let me uh, shut down the system log. Again, purge these guys. And then stop job entry subsystem. Okay, quiet. And stop and quit. I need to update the Hercules configuration file again, so let me go into my uh, local configuration. I already have my DASD here. Now I have to add a parameter because I want to share the DASD uh, as 01 between two instances of uh, Hercules. So this is how we do it. We add a, a parameter called share DASD port. And I'm gonna use port 399D. That's the default value, but it's easier if I specify it so that I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And now this system here is ready to cold start, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Let me go on the other one and update what I have to do on the other one. So I have here a terminal for the other one. Of course, I have to use a different ports, so Hercules 01, see you later. Uh, okay, 3, 4. So first thing I have to do is go to Parmlib here because I need this uh, DASD, this shared DASD to be visible at IPL for the second system too. So I'm gonna go into the VAT LST and update that too the same way I did on the other system. Essentially, all the system must have exactly the same parameters. Uh, 3350 and MVS 3.8 spool disk 2. Okay, that's good. Save. Uh, and then I have to go into a job entry subsystem to Parm. Okay, I do my backup maybe. Uh, oh, whoop, sorry, a little bit too fast. And over here, well, the same thing. First, the checkpoint has to be uh, ASP01. And then I have to enter the name of the two systems. Uh, okay, that's like this right here. Um, oh, uh, no, not O, oh, the I2. And then S1 SID equal K158 S2 
SID equal L168. Mm -hmm. Color is different, but it's no problem. Uh, all right. Uh, like this uh, X, X, and log off. I believe I don't need to do anything else. Of course, I will have to shut down this also. So I disconnect here. I come back here and now I shut down the second one. Uh, BSP pilot uh, shut now. Good. And I will have to, of course, update the Hercules configuration of that system. So I will do that when the system is down. So basically, the first system is going to share its NASD to this second one. And I have to tell the second one to go <laughs> uh, load or connect to the, the shared NASD of the first one. I have to add a, a statement in the configura local configuration file. Uh, Z and D. D S1 and then the job entry subsystem 2. Good. And then quiet. Stop and quit. Good. Now I have to update the configuration. Let me use 012. Now I have to say the following. On 2, well, attach on 242, a 3350. But this one is located where? Well, it's located on local host port 3990. And as the 242, like this. Okay, well, I believe that's fine. Good. So now I'm gonna go back to the first one here, and I need to do a cold start of this one. Okay, so let's do that. We do a start Hercules like this, then IPL 148. And over here, I'm not going to answer 00, 0 CMD equals 0, 02 because this will perform a warm start of the start of the minimal system. I want to do a cold start, so I'm going to specify a member number that does not exist, so that this way it's going to stop here, and I'll be able to do my cold start. How to do a cold start? Sometimes people ask me uh, or ask this question on the Discord channel, you know, so. First, what you do, you start the pilot, even though job entry subsystem is not started yet, you have to start the pilot like this, and then you start job entry subsystem, and you have to use capital letters if I'm right. So start with the capital letters, job entry subsystem 2, 3 commas, then I want the minimal system, so M2 equal start min uh, if you have to change the uh, the, uh, the parameter file you could specify m equal job and three subsystem two back but I'm not gonna do that because I want to use the new one and then parm equal now you say cold uh, no rec like this okay so I think it's fine but in capital letters and it should start Okay, so now it's telling you uh, waiting for checkpoint. Well, wait, and at some point it's gonna tell you what to do. So maybe Moshiks will have some explanations for this. And maybe that's the cause of my problems anyway, but uh, let's see what happens. We have to wait for a certain amount of time. There's a, <laughs> a timeout for this. Of which I'm surprised a little bit. Okay, so. It says unable to obtain it. Okay, fine. Reply Y to continue. Let's do that. Uh, zero Y. 
and then confirm the change point, uh, the checkpoint record change. So let's do that. Uh, reply zero one. Uh, yes, okay. And then it starts. You see the cold start uh, in progress. You get this message that uh, the data set is partially unusable, which is a normal message uh, in the context. That's because the, the data set does not occupy the entire DSD completely. There are some free uh, tracks, so it comes from that essentially. So that's fine. Uh, so I get this, which is good. Fine, fine. So this one is started. <laughs> well, that's good. CMD, uh, CMD1 is not there, but that's fine. We don't care about it. <clears throat> we start this all the time, but nobody uses it apparently. Now let's come here. Uh, whoops, sorry. And we want to do a warm start. So start uh, Q lease. Uh, IPL 148 and now to this one I'm gonna answer uh, CMD equals 02 uh, uh, does he find the, the DASD now you can see here on 242 the DASD the shared DASD which is taken from 242 on this uh, local port of the other system so that's that's fine apparently he finds it and over here okay come back here good all right so now my two systems are started let's make a TSO connection this is on the second one so let's connect mm -hmm. Let's go on Hercules 01, maybe. See you later. Now that's my second system, L168. Okay. Uh, maybe RFE like this. Three. And let's go to our list. Now I see only my job, my TSO job, but if I do this status of everything, now you can see all the jobs. So you can see the init, the pilot, the log on system 158, and you see the same thing on system uh, 168. So the DASD, the, the multi-access pool is apparently working for the moment. So uh, that's it. So let's try to run a job from one system to the other, okay? So there are different ways to do that. One way you can do is essentially put on the first system, let's say on this, now I'm on the second one, okay. So on the first one here, you see when I do, I don't know the initiators like this, uh, L equal A, I believe. You can see that we have different initiators with different class of executions, all right? So the first one is class A, the other one is B and A and so on. If, for example, I change the class of execution for initiator 1 to, let's say, class uh, C equal R instead of A, and then on the second system, I want to execute a job in class R, there are, there are no initiators on the second system with that class, but because the, the job will go in the spool, the common spool before it is treated, Job entry system, system will look for for one of the system in the, in the complex or the sysplex, if you wish, if it has an initiator with that class, and that will be the case for the first system. So he's going to send the job over there and execute the, the job on the first system. So if we properly set up the class of the initiators on each system, we can this way run jobs from one system to another. Another way to do it is to use a job farm called System Affinity and specify the name of the system. So let's try to do that together. I'm going to show you. So maybe four. And 
let's go to our QD01. So I'm gonna create a small COBOL job and try to run it. Uh, I am currently on uh, system L168. Let's try to run it on system K158. So that's gonna be, I don't know, COB L. Uh, sorry. <coughs> okay. Now there's a problem. Well, I'm gonna use Hercules 01. Sorry. Now maybe uh, Mushix will have some <laughs> stuff to tell us about that because we have TSO users on the first system and TSO users on the second system and uh, if you try to use the the same at the same time that there might be some confusions you know so we have to be careful about that but for the moment I'm log only on the second one so that should be okay so I'm gonna do a job with this but I don't think I need to do exactly that but I want to keep it in the, the spool anyway and I'm gonna use a, a name like this uh, Maybe my name, and the message class, equal H. Uh, I think it's okay, I'm not sure, okay. And then, uh, okay, the step, so hello, exec, cobic, like this. Cub, uh, sys punch, dd, sys out, equal B. I believe. Oh, not Kobo, but Cob. Uh, Cob Syslib DD DR DSN equals Sys1 dot Coblib. Disposition equals shareable. That's not the a, a proper a, a proper library to specify here because that should be the the, the copybook library, but uh, there won't be any copybook in the... Uh, oh, damn it. Uh, I'm not sure I can... Let me type it again. Uh, syslib. DD. DSM. Uh, it's no problem if I specify this, because I'm not going to use any copybooks anyway. So, and it's just going to avoid some message. Shareable. And then now let's type the program itself. Uh, I believe it's over here. So identification division uh, program ID uh, hello. Environment divisions. Division. They're all empty. There's nothing there. That's why I write this. But I need to write them, I guess, with this whole compiler. Procedure division. And then I'm gonna display uh, hello from L61 upon console. So if there everything went fine, I would get this message on the console of the other system. Okay? So stop run like this. And this which is not necessary but I like to put it anyway. Save. Uh, let's hope it's okay. I believe it's fine. Message class, go back on. Let's try this. Okay, so I need to see the system one over here. Alright. That's the console of system one. So let's try to submit this. I'm crossing my finger. Is it going there? No, I don't see it. Does it run on this one? Oh, it ran on that one. Okay. Am I on the right system? Okay. Yeah, that's normal because I never... <laughs> I, I'm using the standard class and I'm not using this job parm parameter I told you. So 
Okay, so it went fine on the system L168. We can see the message, hello here. Now I'm gonna try to run it on the other system. So let me introduce that job parameter here. Job arm, sys affinity K158. Uh, save. And then let's go back here. And then submit. Let's see what happens. Does this work? Oh, yeah, it works almost. We get a disastrous error, but it's not disastrous at all. You just submit again. And you can see the job now, huh? Here it is. So this is the console of K158, and we get this message, hello from L68 over there, okay? So it almost works. That's what I was telling you at the beginning of the video. You know, that's a project in progress. So at the time of recording uh, this video, I'm still with this problem of disastrous error. I'm not sure where it comes from. I thought, we thought, uh, Mushix and, and I, that it could come from the RACF, but I, I'm not sure about that. So uh, <clears throat> he's gonna look at it and maybe at the time of posting this video, uh, we're gonna have an answer regarding this, but if I submit it again, let's say, let's, let's try to submit it again. Uh, I got the error, disastrous, but I submit another time. Apparently, I get this properly. So there's something at stake here. I'm not sure what it is, but normally, if of course, if the DASD sharing is probably set up and if the checkpoint is probably set up and the protection is probably properly set up and so on. That should work fine. And of course, I should see my job now. Let's uh, go to 3.8. Here they are. And as you can see, when in the log, you can see that it was executed. The first one on L168, because there was no uh, system affinity parameter. But now on this one, well, maybe it's hard because of the color, but it's written here K158. So that that job run on the system K158. Okay, so this is how we set up a multi-access pool. Or some of the steps, maybe we have to do a little bit more regarding the RACIF uh, indicator and stuff like that to make this work without a disastrous error. Uh, maybe uh, Moshix in this video uh, will tell us a little bit after I, I'm telling you or before, I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So if you want to increase the size of the spool, I showed you how to do it with a second SD. If you want to explore how to set up a different uh, MVS system with a shared uh, spool, here's a first uh, step in that uh, direction. I suggest that we uh, take care of the uh, the TSO user properly, you know, because as you can see, I'm logging Hercules 01 on L168, but if I try to log on Hercules 01 over here, I think I'm gonna run into some trouble. Let's try to do it. Uh, see you later. See, failed master JCL in logon, so. I can't log on on the first system in Hercules 01 if I'm logged in Hercules 01 in the second system, which makes sense to me somehow. But I guess, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe some parameter has to be uh, set up for, to allow that, such a thing. Or on the other hand, maybe it's not possible and you have to be careful what kind of uh, user you want to allow on different systems and be sure that they don't try to log in at the same time. I don't remember if it's possible or not, because at the time I was using MVS myself, I just had one account and it was not on TSO, it was on music anyway, so... Uh, so I'm gonna stop here, I guess, and let uh, Moshix talk to you, uh, if necessary, and to add some stuff to this, uh, to this thing. Uh, yeah, okay, so let me stop right now and back at you, uh, Moshix. Bye.
Well, this was uh, very, very interesting. Thank you so much, René Ferlon. Uh, that's more or less exactly how you should do it. Um, uh, he, of course, René followed the uh, manuals, which is the proper way to do it. And so I think it works 98%. Um, some things that I noticed in, uh, and I've had uh, in the past three, four years, um, I would say six, 10 times maybe I've created just two mass uh, clusters because it's so easy to do as we just saw in the video it just takes uh, basically half an hour to set up a brand new system uh, but some things I do differently uh, in when I set up is the checkpoint time of 60 seconds is just too much uh, I usually do it with uh, three seconds okay you can also do, do two seconds but uh, 60 seconds is it's a bit too much and uh, and then um, I tuned some other parameters here. I do create the classes as uh, Professor Honor Fanon said. I usually have a, uh, a class L and R, so left and right, or you can call them whatever. And, uh, and then I submit in those. Or you can, of course, use the system affinity as well, but that works fine. Uh, I increase the buffer size a little bit. And also, one more thing I do is I make sure to not have any empty tracks on the DASTY. So I have about 30 tracks for the checkpoint data set and then all the rest of the free tracks I allocate all of them to JS2. Um, I know that JS2 doesn't like it so much and we saw some error messages about it which are seem innocuous but um, it's better to just use all of the data of the tracks on the on the on the DASTY. And the other thing I don't do is I don't actually copy the checkpoint data set I created from scratch. I don't know the copying, I don't trust it so much. I just like to create it uh, from scratch. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's very easy to create uh, a checkpoint data set. So those are the things I would do differently. Certainly the interval time for the checkpoint, which is the interval when both systems keep on checking the checkpoint data set for new updates. So 60 seconds is, about, is, is too much. And then um, I create uh, um, initiators just for each system. The other thing is I don't copy the checkpoint data set uh, and I use all the available tracks for the JS2 spool space. Those are some of the things. Now, I haven't uh, tried to fix the problems yet that Rene encountered, which I have not encountered in the past. Or well, actually, I did encounter, but I, I removed them by uh, removing the RACF protection bit for the data sets. And, uh, but I'm going to be on a long trip starting this weekend and I'm going to take uh, the images that uh, Professor Van Heuvelon used in his video and I'm going to attempt to fix it and then communicate with uh, René and, uh, and make up a follow video to see, to show you how we fix the issues that he had. It's a very small issue because the, on the second trial his jobs will always run, but it's not nice and in a production system, of course, that wouldn't be acceptable. But uh, this is highly interesting and uh, just shows us um, all the things that are going to just two parameters. There are hundreds of parameters and uh, if you operate uh, your own MVS uh, mainframe you need to know about just to and one of the things that happens with uh, <laughs> with the uh, with having MVS 3.8 available to the enthusiast community is that all of one all, all of us became system programmers effectively whereas in the past you could have a programmer on a mainframe never once having looked at the just two parameter in her life and, you know you have people who work for 40 years on mainframe never saw the console and never saw just two parameter uh, but now that we have our own mainframe each one of us has at least one mainframe running we have all become also system programmers and so we have to learn to deal with these things but it's also highly interesting anyway this was a very good video thank you so much Renee, for the time you put into this we all appreciate it. everybody respects you for um, how you're professional and thorough and well organized you are and uh, and how well you present things and so uh, thank you for all this if you like this video i do urge you to uh, to show our appreciation to Rene to press on the thumbs up button post comments about with questions uh, or how you would do things differently or maybe you have a solution to the problem and then uh, uh, thank you for watching and see you soon on this channel goodbye mm -hmm.